So I just got back from India a couple of weeks ago and I did this hanging uh, bead project with them and had a lot of fun with it. Um, when we did the project though, I used the larger beads, the sixes, and I kept thinking in the back of my head the whole time, I'm like, man, I want to do something like this, but I want to do it with the regular smaller beads, the 11s, and see what that would look like. I want to do something a little more complex this time. So anyway, I'm not going to cover materials or any of that other kind of stuff. I'm just going to try and show you the update of the progress. And I'm freestyling this thing. So I got kind of an idea in my head about what I want to do, but there's no plan or anything like that. I'm not drawing up schematics or <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> the plans never survive first contact with the beads anyway. When I made my mom or lighter, I used these sunshine tohos, but I was dying to, and I used these other really lighter beads a little bit. I've been dying to use the lighter beads, and, and I think it's going to, I think it's going to look good. We'll see how it goes. So I've been kind of looking at my colors and everything, and, uh, you know, that lighter I did for my mom used the four compass points, uh, black, yellow, red, and white, and uh, I've I've been getting a little more savvy about what colors to choose. Uh, when I made the lighter though, I, I really used this darker yellow right here and then a kind of a, a bright middle range yellow. Um, thinking about it some more, this one I want to try and use instead of the, the mid range yellow, I'm going to use a much lighter yellow and see how that works. Also, instead of using a pure white, I'm going to use an off white, it's kind of an ivory color and we'll see how that goes. So the very inner tube that I want to use is going to be a, just a 12. So there's my little starter ring and we'll go from there. So here's the uh, basic motif and colors that I'm using and the effect I kind of want to achieve is this uh, weaving back and forth of the colors in a kind of a zigzag pattern with solid bar color, so it's real similar to what I did on my mom's lighter cover. I did the uh, back and forth weaving of the colors uh, just like on a lighter with the little white uh, hexagon shapes to break it up some and then on the edges I just did this fade which turned out pretty nice, two shades of red, two shades of yellow and then a off-white with a black border and that'll be the middle part I, t I tried 24 beads and looked at it like this and there wasn't enough space. I wanted more space. The, the 24 was just barely a bit bigger than the 12. You could fit it inside but uh, there wasn't much gap and I want a bit of a gap here so I'm going to jump up to 36 and check that out. So we completed part two after a bit of a hiatus. Yeah, we got the first part done. Now, what we did with the second part was essentially the same, except shorter. That's what I wanted to do, is I wanted to have pretty much the exact same pattern. And you can see we've got a fade in, a white, red, two reds, two yellows, a white, yellow, blah, blah, blah. You can see it's very similar. Now, the third tier needs to be even shorter than this. I got some strategies to try and work through that. <laughs> now I'm getting to, okay, I'm trying to dream about how am I going to put all this together. Now I had originally wanted to have some kind of idea that I would have one inside of the other. But it's not working for me. It's not working. I want, I want these guys attached to each other. I want, I want all the artwork displayed. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'll join it together here somehow black to black with black beads you know the thing is is that the length of this thing is starting to add up three inches pretty much for that guy and then this guy right here you know, about five inches so that's eight inches the final top tier piece probably going to be a couple inches itself you know can't get too much shorter but we're gonna do everything we can to make it shorter so this is how you start circular flat peyote the idea here is that I'll start with a flat piece and switch to tubular and it'll curve over 
and then uh, that'll be and I'll, I'll, that'll be my final outer tier of this thing. Wow, <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna look like. Oh my god, oh, so many possibilities and fear. Mom, you're gonna watch this video someday, and I want you to know I'm walking through hell for you. I'm walking through design hell for you right here. Let's switch to tubular peyote at this point and hope that it comes out good. And if it does, we'll just go right back into this pattern. If the tubular peyote, if we switch to tubular peyote, we're coming in with this white and we'll start in our triangular pattern. But instead of having six, we're going to have 12 because we doubled the beads. We went from 36 to 72. I'm only wondering what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? I have to shorten this up again. I've got to shorten this up. I only want this. I will only want this outer tier to be about half this length, and we still got to kind of have this pattern at the bottom. So where we're going to have to save room is only on this middle part right here. So you can see when I started with the white, I started tubular peyote. I just kept it starting to curve over. That's what it does. Yeah, sometimes you break a gosh darn bead. And on, on a project like this, you'll break it two rows back. You gotta take off two damn rows when you break the bead. Ah, uh, I hate it. Well, I was uh, uh, working on this. This is how far I've gotten, and my thread started really freaking out on me. It was like actually snarling up on itself and everything. So I had to cut and tie it off. I couldn't even make it to the end, so I have to go back. And figure out where my next bead's supposed to go. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, uh, this one right here. That's the next bead, but I'm gonna have to thread starting there. <sighs> Man, that's a rare one when your thread actually just freaking gives you the middle finger. It's not that it's. It, I was getting a few knots occasionally, and I'd pick them apart, but the thread just started like disintegrating. So anyway, I said, well, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and finish off my top here. When you look, remember when we finished, there were six beads in a circle, and I had the string coming out of one. What I did was I sewed three more beads on. So I'd sew a bead, skip two, you know, skip one, go through one, skip one, go through one. That gives you, uh, you know, it's like single peyote, single drop uh, even count peyote, but with only three beads per, per row. Now when I got those done, I came back and again I had to go through two, just like regular. I came out and what I did was I took three beads and I went through them and around this hook here, around this uh, ring, and then back down through into the next bead, around, up, through, and around. So I came through three times and then I wove back in and tied it off. So I've got uh, three lines that should do uh, 15 pounds of or 3 times 6, 18 pounds of uh, weight there, which is way the hell over the top about what this, but at the end of the day, you're kind of down to, you know, the single situation here. So, that's the way I do it. I've found problems, because you, you finish up with three beads, you know, how do you thread through each one and go, well, you go through some kind of little single set of beads here and you go out and around and back through them again and that seems to take care of the you know you don't want to just go straight from three beads and try and tie onto one hook like this or one location because it it don't work so hot I know because I did that on some previous stuff and you can see my uh, mediocrity and all of its startling beauty on other videos but I thought about it and I messed around with it and I'm like I'm liking this right here I really do and I get a nice fairly tight weave and so we finished up this uh, top piece here and again you see this where it draws in and then it bells back out again uh, those blacks are smaller 11 inches that's gonna suck the patterns looking really good though <laughs> at least that looks nice uh, we'll see how the joints look all right, so I got the first tie off done. You can see that right here. Um, instead of going against these black beads on the bottom and tying onto there, 
I went one bead up so if you can imagine uh, you know where this bottom one is I went one up from that and uh, there's nine of these things so it's every fourth bead uh, you know so you, bead number one bead number five blah 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 and then back to bead number one again and there's nine of those and uh, you skip every other one here because this is 72 or 36 for one row and this is 18 for one row so it's it's only got half the distance between them so it worked out to an even nine uh, you know this is nine up here I did six down here so every single bead in the middle one is attached and then it's every third but it's the same idea as you don't go with the very bottom edge you go on the inside one up and uh, that worked out pretty damn nice okay so I bought some of this here and uh, it was about seven bucks over at Walmart I got four of these things they're about you know like what's it say yeah an inch by 16 by 16 okay so I cut off a few chunks of uh, foam rubber and stuffed them up in there we'll see if they stay up in the top and it sure did go a long way towards helping it keep its shape it could very well be that it'll just pop out and start hanging in the bottom here and flopping around and I don't want that I don't know about you but I get really nervous about long pieces of string and uh, you gotta use long pieces of string for this so uh, I've been using about 40 foot so I did all of this except for two with my first piece so all of these right here that's all one piece of string <laughs> that's a lot of string right each one of these is about a you know, uh, that's about getting up on a foot, you know, somewhere about 10 to 12 inches, you know, and the string goes down and up on each one. So unless you want to be doing a lot of tying off and stringing on, uh, you got to use a long piece of thread. Now this pattern I've been using, it's, it's real simple. You want to talk about my limitations? I originally wanted to do this nope doesn't work I I can't keep track of it and I just mess it up all the time so I gave up and I said okay um, and, and I probably blew five or six hours trying to get it right and I'm just I'll have to think about it some the, the thing also too was once I got a few strung on it didn't look nearly as good as this I, I don't think the eye could follow it but this right here that same thing over and over it's really eye-catching to me so I've got the pattern in my head I can only hold one line that's it you can see how nicely this turned out that pattern is really awesome this is always the tough part for me because I'm so busy going wow it looks really cool and then at the same time I'm trying to say okay what can I learn out of this so I do a better job next time I really like these long frills. They may be too long compared to the cap. So you can see the inside of it. It's the same pattern. The pattern's the longest here, but it's really the same pattern three times. But I went with more beads in each part of the pattern to give it an overall longer length on this part. And then I shortened it up some for here. And then finally I went really short to achieve the top dimension. What don't I like? Well, there's obviously the smaller mistakes. Uh, you know, uh, one of these guys is slightly longer, which means I added a bead. There's an extra bead or two sometimes uh, on the fringe. My biggest problem I have is how weak this top part is. It really doesn't want to keep its shape very well. I think uh, uh, my attempt to use foam padding to help puff it out some, I still think the theory is sound. But I didn't want to go back and cut up all this work and redo this again and put one big chunk in there. So I put in a bunch of little chunks. Well, I don't even know, maybe with the big chunks, it's just not springy enough or something. And they fall down in this little gap here. And you can actually see that white in this area back behind the beadwork there. And when I poke it up in there, after a while it comes back down again. And that's what I always say. Well, if I had this whole thing to do over, what would I change? I wouldn't change the pattern. 
it's beautiful. Um, I think I even improved over the lighter cover I did for Mon because I went with this uh, uh, darker yellow and a lighter yellow and moved it this way where I switched from red to dark yellow. In the lighter it was the other way around. I had a, a bright yellow, a sunshine yellow, and then a darker yellow underneath. So there's kind of this meeting. But, uh, and there was only one set. Just this part right here. Just this part right here. That's all, that's all there was in the lighter cover. But uh, I think the pattern and the color choices turned out just remarkably nice. I think another big not so good thing was I executed my idea, which is I wanted to have a central thing behind the fringe. Well, the fringe is so thick, you can't hardly see the central piece at all. I mean, it's there, but you can only see a little bit of it. It's not very apparent. So instead of hanging like this, and the way I put these guys together, another thought I had is what if I had inverted it? So it would actually hang like this, but instead of having the fringe connecting up here, it would connect to the bottom and you wouldn't even have this circular, this circular bit. So the whole thing, the fringe would hang down from the bottom and you wouldn't lose any of the artwork. It would all still stay there. But I got so hung up on this idea of the fringe hanging down from the outer part, I never did that. And the thing is, it looks kind of, I don't know, I just didn't think about doing it this way to begin with. Uh, one other thing is, is that I was trying to do kind of a pattern where this would we move up and down and look more like this underlying pattern here. Uh, although it would be in a square style because these beads are all right next to each other instead of this uh, hexagonal or triangular style. But it would give kind of the same look and feel and I just couldn't make it work. When I say I couldn't make it work was I couldn't get the beads on there right. <laughs> I kept making mistakes. So if I wanted to take a lot of extra time and work out some kind of way to do that, it's still possible. And the more I look at this, the more I, I think you can get an effect like that. These beads are close enough together that you can get where if there's patterns varying up and down it would actually look like it. And when you get far away like we did outside you couldn't even see anything else. All you could see is these colors. You know, so definitely it would it would show up. One thing I'm really proud of is this top, how I finally figured out how to do these darn beads. I was having such a hard time trying to figure out how to get from my weave to one single metal thing. Well, anyway, I, I think it's a great piece. Definitely the most complicated one I've done so far. And, you know, I haven't even been at this for a year. I'm definitely going to do some more hanging stuff with the smaller beads. So there it is, start to finish. Mom's small bead hanging fringe thingy. I don't know what you call it. I call it cool. <laughs> Salute.